I don't want to get too close. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Good to uh, good to be with you this morning. <clears throat> Sarah Captain Stone, good morning to you. Good to see you this morning. Hope you are having a good week. Sister Carol, good morning. Good to see you this morning. Smiley face, what a blessing. <clears throat> Trust you all. Had a good day yesterday. Uh Pray, pray for Tracy and I today. We've got a, um, a, a lady, Ian and Glennis, good morning, a lady and her daughter coming to see us today uh, from Perth. We used to be, I used to be their pastor in Perth. Amanda, good morning. Tracy, good morning. And uh, they're coming up to see us and have some questions and I guess there'll be a bit of counselling. So I'd value your prayers if you'd pray about that for us. Appreciate that very much. Well, it's also official. Look at that. Coffee official, coffee snob. And excuse me for a minute. Just going to wet the old whistle before I start. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. We'll just give it a few more seconds. A few more seconds. And then uh, we'll get started this morning. I hope you're looking forward to a good day. All right, <clears throat> I think that's it, unless people come on a bit later. I'd like for you to turn to the little New Testament book of Philemon this morning. The book of Philemon. Uh, really, when you read through this and study through it, it, it really is a, a powerful book. It's only a little book. Um, but I want to talk to you this morning from the book of Philemon on this thought, adding value to others. Adding value, adding value to others. Um, and I think that we see that here, there's no doubt, in the life between the Apostle Paul, Anisimus and, and Philemon. And I think it's important that we, uh, that we understand the, the very thought of being able to add value to others. So let's have a look at the scriptures. Philemon, verse 10, I beseech thee for my son. So this is Paul now writing to Philemon, all right. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. So at one time he was unprofitable, now he's profitable, all right. And I believe the way that he became profitable is a number of ways he got saved, but then Paul stepped out and spoke on his behalf, all right. And gave him a glowing report. That, and that's what we can do for others. All right, now let's keep going. Uh, verse 12, Whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in, in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it, albeit I do not say to thee, how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. Alan, good evening. What a what a interesting little passage. And of course, he finishes out the book of Philemon there. Onesimus. Uh, Onesimus. A nobody. Basically a nobody. A slave. Now you've got to think about in that day, a slave. They were nobodies. They, they were devalued people. Uh, unappreciated, mistreated often. I'm not saying that Philemon did this with Onesimus, but generally speaking, and, this is, and when you read through it, often you'll see that about masters and, and their servants. All right? And Paul said, if, if you're a believing master, then you better treat your servants well. Okay? So there were those who never treated their servants well. They were just slaves. You know, hey, slave, do this. Hey, slave, do that. You know what I mean? And uh, devalued amongst society, not really having much of a status symbol and much of a place amongst people 
themselves. However, aren't you glad that God values people? Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 10.31 that we are of more value than many sparrows. And I like that. Now here's another thought. Let's just say nobody adds any value to your life. As sad as that would be, disappointing that would be, God values you. And we've got to understand that, that God values you. He values people. And one of the amazing things about the Christian life is that God changes people. Now, he's taken off. He's run away. He's, he's left his master. Now, I don't know, and the scriptures don't say, I don't know whether Onesimus knew Paul through Philemon, whether Paul, when he visited Philemon and met Onesimus or whatever, but he's taken off and he's found Paul there in Rome. And guess what? Paul leads him to Christ. What a blessing. It says that in verse 10. He says, uh, uh, I beseech thee for my son and Isthmus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. So while Paul was in prison and Onesimus come and saw him, Paul led him to Jesus. Aren't you glad that God can change lives? Now, when you got saved, God changed you. Now, here's a thought. God, listen, listen. God values people so much. That's why he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross. I mean, he paid the ultimate price for you and for me. That's how much value he places on us, giving up the greatest value for us all. Hillary, good morning. Or good afternoon, good evening. Now, Onesimus took off, he left Paul, and Paul led him to Christ. Onesimus had an encounter with God. And when he had that encounter with God, God changed his life. Let me just say this. There are, there are times in our lives, even as Christians, that we need to have the close encounter of the God kind. Close encounter of the God kind. We had it when we got saved, praise the Lord. I still remember the day I got saved and uh, I'm never going to forget that day. I don't want to forget that day. What a day. Uh, but you know, there have been times since in my life where I've had encounters with God, whether it be at work or driving around and whatever. God and I had encounters. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm I'm not saying that there was a... Uh, you know, God came to me in the form of this. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Just a time where, where God and I intersect. I, it, I remember a time it was at a conference. I was sitting at a, in a conference and uh, listening to the preaching and I remember just, I just, man, had an encounter with God. There's been a few times there where, where I've done that in a conference and, and uh, it just seemed like everybody left the room and, and it was just me and God. I mean, have you ever had something like that happen? That's, that's you having a, a God encounter. God meeting you at the crossroads, so to speak. So Onesimus has an encounter with God and God changes his life. You had an encounter with God and you got saved and God changed your life. But we all understand that the Christian life is about a progressive change. We are being changed. We're being conformed. And, and part of that is times where we've got to have that encounter with God and uh, have that time where we, we are changed in, in, in the eyes of God. Paul had his encounter with God on the road to Damascus. And we must accept, and here's the thing, if we want to add value to people, because we have, we've got, listen, we've got the, um, the opportunity to do that. Now, God values people. But we've got the opportunity to add value to people in the eyes of others. All right, we've got, we've got that opportunity. Now, here's the thing. We, we can add value to people by what we say or we can devalue people by what we say. You know, you run into, you run into the path of somebody and uh, start talking about a certain individual. Right there, you have the opportunity. Now, I'm not saying lying about people or anything like that, but you have the opportunity right there to devalue a person or to add value to a person by what you say. It's very important when you think about that. Paul gave Onesimus a glowing character report. Now, I want you to look at some scripture with me because what Paul did for Onesimus, uh, Paul had happened to him through Barnabas. And Paul's passing this on. I want you to go to Acts chapter 9 with me. Acts chapter 9. 
And I want us to learn this morning about the importance of adding value to people by what we say and how we can encourage people in the eyes of others. All right. Look at this now in Acts chapter 9, verse 25. Then the disciples took him by night, this is Paul, and led him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. He had a desire. He, he wanted to go and join himself with them. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. Now, in part, you can't blame that because this is the guy, Brother Jack, good morning. This is the guy that was persecuting people and killing them, right? But look at verse 27. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how that he preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. Barnabas stepped up. He said, hey, fellas, hey, listen, I, I know this guy Saul. Yep, he's born again. He's been preaching the gospel. So, so Barnabas stepped in, adding value to Paul or Saul in the eyes of others. And, and Paul now does this with Onesimus. Now let's have a look at another inst instance in Scripture when that happened. A couple more. Can I give you two more? Why don't you go to Acts chapter 18. Apollos. All right, Apollos. Uh, verse 24, Acts 18, 24. A certain Jew named Apollos, born of Alexandria, eloquent man and mighty in the Scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the Spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took, under, took him under them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the breath, now watch this, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come helped them much, which had believed through grace, for he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. Did you notice what the brethren did? The brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. Hey, receive You know what they're doing? They're adding value to people. They added value to Apollos. All right. Now I want to go to one last scripture. I want you to go to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, because we see it here as well. Also in David's life, 1 Samuel 25. Now David, oh, this is it. Oh, anyway, I won't get into the whole of it. It's a very interesting account in David's life. David was told that he was going to be king. He wasn't king yet. He was told he was going to be king, but nobody was treating him like he was a king. And he got a little bit upset about that. Now, there was a guy by the name of Nabal. Nabal, all right? Nabal, whatever you want to call his name. Verse 10, 1 Samuel 25, 10. Nabal answered David, David's servants and said, Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants Nowadays that break away every man from his master. So David's young men come back to him and said, this is what Nabal said. And they all, David got upset. David got angry. He said, right, we're going to go get him. All right. But I want you to see what one of the young men said. But one of the young men, verse 14, one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master. And he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything as long as we were conversant with him when we were in the field. So in other words, here's one of David's young servants, young men gave a good report to Abigail. Now let me, let me just say this. If, if you or if you know someone that feels devalued in life, they feel like there's someone that's got no value, there's always, God always has someone God always has someone who will give a good report about you. You don't have to worry. God has someone waiting where he'll say, hey, you know, uh, you know that Stevenson guy, you know Paul? Yeah, look, and, and they'll say something good and add value to your life in the eyes of others. Now, in, in the eyes of God, you are valuable. But it's unfortunate amongst men, amongst Christianity, that sometimes we don't see the value in others until someone comes along and gives a good report about that person, thereby adding value to them, and thereby uh, their uh, position or their status or whatever you want to call it is exalted amongst people. Right? Now, 
There's nothing wrong with that. We have the opportunity to do that, to add value under people. But there will always be someone that God has waiting in the wings to give a good report about you. Proverbs 27 verse 12 says this. Another, Let's have a look at that. Proverbs 24. I won't try and quote it. I'll mess it up. Proverbs 27. Because you don't need to go around. This is, now here's the mistake. All right? If you feel undervalued as a person, you don't think that people are, are giving you the right, you know, the credit and all this sort of stuff, whatever. Okay. The danger is you trying to promote yourself and trying to talk yourself up in the in the eyes of people, trying to defend yourself, trying to say, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I've done this, I've, you know, hey, no, no, that's the worst thing you can do. All right. Look at what Proverbs says. Proverbs 27 verse two. Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. Let someone else do it. God has somebody, like a Paul, uh, like a uh, Aquila and a Priscilla, or like a, a young man, like one of David's young men, God always has somebody there ready to give a good report about you. All right. Uh, I remember a while back, uh, loved this man dearly, uh, missionary, um, and, and felt somewhat undervalued ab about the churches that he had started uh, in other countries. And often when I would get to him and try and encourage him, he'd always be bringing up. And you know the state of a person's heart when they always keep bringing something up. So he kept bringing up this thing about, oh, you know, I've started, da -da -da -da, and mentions all these churches and so on. And he felt undervalued by people. But God had people in his life that were ready to give a good report about this guy and say, hey, you know, brother such and such, did you know that he started? Did you know this? Did you know this? Did you know this? And they're like, oh, didn't know that. You'll see, sometimes people don't know until they're informed by others. And therefore, when that person informs about the individual, they add value to them. Everyone wants to be valued. Everybody wants what they accomplish to be valued. We understand, as I said, in the eyes of God, we're valued, and that's the most important thing. Colin, Pauline Smith, good morning. Same with everyone else. I can't see everyone else on this morning. I don't know whether Brother Ross, you're there, Michael Ross or, or whoever, and it just Facebook's having a bit of a meltdown, I think. Everybody wants to be valued. No one wants to be undervalued. And, and the accomplishments that we do, you know, we want people to look at that and, and value those things. All right? It's part of it. But don't, don't try and add value to yourself by talking up yourself. All right? Let others do that. Now, what did the Apostle Paul do with Onesimus? Well, firstly, number one, Paul was confident that Onesimus had changed. All right, he was confident that Onesimus had changed. As a matter of fact, he was that confident that he had said, if we go back to Philemon, he had said, hey, you know, this, I, I, I basically said, I've led him to the Lord. Now, here's the thing about Paul and Philemon. Philemon had to trust Paul's reputation about what Paul was saying about Onesimus. You know, hey... Philemon, I led Onesimus to my Lord. He's he, uh, to the Lord. Uh, he's my son in my bonds. In other words, I led him while I was in prison, and so on, and so forth. All right. So Paul was confident that Onesimus has, had changed. Um, you know, you know, you go out, and you, I was asked the other day, um, you know, to be a reference, uh, a reference, and and I don't mind being a reference for people. You know, as long as. I don't like being references for people that I know that uh, are not doing. Oh, can you be a reference for me about? I've applied for this job and blah blah blah, and you know they they didn't do well in the other job, and I'm supposed to speak a glowing report about someone who's not done too good. That that makes for a difficulty, all right. But Paul was confident that Onesimus had changed, and now he's gone about setting about saying to Philemon, "Hey, restore him, restore, bring him back, bring him back." Paul was willing to put his own reputation on the line. Look at what he says in verse 13 and 18. Whom I would have retained with me, that is in thy stead, he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. In other words, he's saying, this guy is really important to me. He's value to me. He's valuable to me. He can minister to me. And, and by saying that, he's, he's sort of sowing the seed in Philemon's mind, saying, hey, 
This guy is valuable. All right, verse 18. If he hath wronged thee or owed thee aught, put that on mine account. I'll take care of that. Now you've got to think about something about in these days that if a slave, if there was a slave that had run away and was caught, the extreme punishment could have been death. And I bet you Onesimus is glad that Paul speaks up. Thirdly, Paul gave a good report. And Paul's good report went a long way for Onesimus. All right. So you can do that. Give a good report about someone. And when you give a good report about somebody, you add value. Listen, it's unfortunate, but it's true that amongst Christianity, there's a lot of gossip that goes on. Now, if you hear something said about someone else that you know is not true, you're responsible to correct that. You're responsible to say to that brother or sister, hang on a second, I just want to let you know that I know this individual and, and what's being said is not right and you can change how people value someone or devalue someone by what you say about them. I want to leave you with this quote, all right? I want to leave you with this quote. Some of you might know a guy by the name of Jordan Peterson. I don't agree with everything that he says, but I, 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 like, I like some of the things that he says. Jordan Peterson said this, people are dying for a word of encouragement. People are dying for a word of encouragement. Now, not only is the individual wanting encouragement, but you can encourage that individual in the eyes of other people and in the ears of other people, adding value to others. What a, what a great thing to do. What a great thing to do to add value to other people. God values people and we ought to value people too. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you. We just praise your holy name. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for books like Philemon where we can learn some important principles in life. And I pray that even today that we would look for someone that we could add value to. Thank you for the change that you bring about in our life, the continual change. And we praise you for that. As we go away today, lead us and guide us, bless us, we ask, use us for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, hey, God bless you. Thank you for uh, joining me this morning. I do appreciate that. Appreciate every morning that you, that you come along. Uh, remember what Jesus said, you shall know the truth and truth shall make you free. Have a great day and until tomorrow, God bless you and I'll see you then. Bye for now.